Vladimir Putin isn't one for diplomacy. He's been prepared to stare down his international opponents in the past, but with this tragedy, it's different. Now, the West is seeking to strengthen existing economic sanctions against Russia, but how will that work? Well, current sanctions prevent targeted individuals from traveling to a particular nation or doing business with that nation. When targeted sanctions were introduced during the initial Crimean conflict in March, this is what happened to the Russian currency and their stock market. Billionaire friends of Vladimir Putin also had their money frozen in foreign banks and took a huge hit to their wealth. The US extended sanctions to include Russian companies before MH17 was shot down, and the EU is now considering a similar stance. There has also been fresh talk of targeting entire industries. This would significantly impact the Russian economy. Now, Russia is the largest supplier of gas and oil in Europe, and they've been happy to use this to their advantage when it comes to strong-arming their European neighbors. It's one of the reasons why there was so little pushback when Crimea was taken away from the Ukraine. That conflict has left Russia far weaker than it has been for some time. Its GDP growth has collapsed over the past 24 months, now sitting far below the 1.3% forecast by the IMF at the start of 2014. And to make matters worse, Russia would have to find as much as $157 billion in the next year to pay off its debt. And don't forget, they'll have to do this without access to most of the world's biggest economies. Now, powerful international leaders have stared down similar sanctions in the past. Iran, Cuba, Syria, and Venezuela all limped along through these penalties without a change of tact. But Russia is much more reliant on the international community than any of these nations, so perhaps this is one negotiation that Putin can't muscle his way through.